is so welcome. Woo! You see? Go hasn't finished yet. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm not going to be long. Um, but um, this week when I was thinking of you guys, I just wanted to encourage you with, with this thing. Um, we've... Um, 2014, many of you that are sitting here don't actually know, but when God changed our season, our plan was to come to Hebron, to come and be connected in this church and from here to plant out. And we even had a conversation with Paul and Shannon in the November and then December God said, no, that's not his plan. And then we planted our church a month later. And um, you have been very special to our hearts and we've seen, like you mentioned Bernard and Wendy and I've been part of that all those years. But here's what I would want to leave you with. You have inspired us to persevere. And God has done incredible things for us to have walked the journey with you and seen how you've allowed God to change and mature. Um, and that will be the fruit of your church. Because as leaders, if we can change, be more like Christ, our people will experience that. So I just want to encourage you to be connected, filled with the Holy Spirit. I always, I've always, i been telling people that recently. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we can just flow in what he has for us. We're ready in every season, in every moment, even when things are difficult. For the church, I felt, um, uh, as Sheila, uh, Sheena, Sheila and them were sharing, that um, I felt that there's people here that felt your season is over. And I felt God wanted to tell you today, that is how you are feeling emotionally, but that is not how he is feeling about you. And if you will surrender today and say, God, that's not how, that's maybe how I feel, but that's not how you feel about me. What is it that you have for me? And I feel that God's just going to almost launch you into the next thing uh, that he has for you, but you have to make that choice. And so the picture I actually had was yesterday we were with a couple, a married couple, and my husband used, uh, Shannon, you can maybe just come and stand behind. Paul is so thin, so I don't know if you're going to get the picture, but you must stand behind him. You must stand behind him. Uh, sorry, Paul. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so, so this, is, this is the picture we used with a couple. When you're a married couple, as a husband, you are there to protect your wife. Any arrows, anything, any accusations you there. When that arrow moves, he moves in front and she's behind being protected. And that's how the leadership of a church works. So the picture I had was, say the screen is Jesus. And if we are in front of him, so maybe I can maybe quickly do this. All your leader, all your, uh, the elders that come, come forward, come and stand here. Stand in a line. Yes, make a line. Um, Byron, you can come. And um, Goody, you can come. And CK, you can come. Stand and look. Stand and look to the screen. Stand here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the picture I had. If you are standing directly in front of Jesus, then he's protecting you. And if they are standing, whoever else is involved, they are standing, you are shielding them from the enemies. But you, as a, as a people, have to position yourselves to be protected by the leadership, the covering that God's placed you under. So if you've committed to this body, then this is your covering under Jesus. And, but if you are not standing behind them, if you're not being protected by them, you are going to be hit by the enemy. You are going to be hit by those arrows. And so I wanted to encourage you, as a new season has been spoken of today, it's your responsibility to get behind them. And that's sometimes a step we take in the spiritual to say, this is my leadership. This is my covering. And as they follow Jesus, I will follow them. Thank you, Odell. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, precious family. I think this is a prophetic season. If the Lord is giving you more words... Uh, or you feel that there's a word you want to share with the fellowship team, um, just there's ways to get it to us. You know, send it on a WhatsApp, whatever. Send it to us. Make sure we get it. Amen. If the Lord's saying something to you, even as part of this church sitting here this morning, send it. Let's, this is a prophetic time to take and listen to what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. Just to add on quickly with that, that thing about if you feel the season is over, I saw that dry branch the Lord cutting it off 
and new growth coming out of that stump. <laughs> I feel the Lord saying that to some of you sitting here this morning. You watch and see what God can do. Let him trim off the dead and let life come. Let life come. I speak life over you this morning. You take it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I think it's feast time. What about the movie, CK? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Is it ready? It's about five minutes. Can you sit for five minutes? All right. Yeah, I'll just say something to say about the offering. We'll talk about that later. The yellow box is... If you have a gift, you can put it in the yellow box, but I'm not going to specifically take up an offering today. If you have a gift and you've brought it into your day to bring you a gift, you're so welcome. I'll put Derek by the yellow boxes over there. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Joshua. In today's video, I will just be telling you guys my whole journey at Hebron Christian Church and the impact the church had on my life. It all started for me when I joined the TOTS classes when I was about four or five years old. And I can still remember my teachers till this day. They also played a very vital role. I joined the youth as well from the beginning of high school up until the end of high school. And that also was a great experience. We did a lot of fun things there. Um, a lot of principles and a lot of values were um, taught to us that we um, needed to use now in our adult lives. So I have also served um, in the church as well. That was a great honor and a privilege. I joined the worship team when I was grade seven and I made my drum debut there <laughs> when I was in grade seven. So I played drums for a few years um, from grade seven up until grade nine. I played the drums in the worship team and then on I officially played the keyboard and I sang um, in the worship team from grade, the end of grade nine, I joined in grade 10. I started to sing in grade 10 and play the keyboard up until my matric year. All the way from Jeffreys Bay, found this church, Chris and Annette. I'm so sorry Annette cannot be with me right at this moment, but I really wanted to get this message to you. Hebron Church, 20 years in that building. It brings back such incredible memories. The things we've been through there when we were still in bloom with with Fountainhead Church and later on Doxadeo, the partnership that we've had, that we still have, the relationship we have, the friendship we had with Paul and Shannon and your wonderful daughters and the elders. So many of you have given so much. So many of you have sacrificed so much to see the vision being fulfilled, what God has done and still will do through Hebron Church in Bloemfontein. From my heart, I want to say thank you for what you guys have meant to us personally. The friends you've been to us, the support you've been to us, that we've always found a family, even right up to now when we go to Bloom, to know that Hebron Church is our family. You are in our hearts and we see ourselves as part of the vision and the dream, even for the future. So may God bless you. I pray abundance over you. I pray for fresh vision. We want to say again, we love you guys. We are with you. And today we celebrate the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the kindness of God over Hebron Church. May He bless you. And I want to say this, you are blessed to be a blessing and the best is yet to come. Remember Karen, who... Um, was at the church a while ago um, and she told me stories of how in the middle of winter in Bloemfontein in July the, the fire of God was so present in the room that people were wearing t-shirts um, they were not cold they were burning up actually um, and people were getting slain in the spirit laughing in the presence of God and um, just really being touched on a very very deep level and I um, I got saved during this time because I was like I want Jesus in my heart and I see and recognize what's going on and um, that really started off um, our relationship with God for me that was very personal and um, tangible. From a very young age, I knew that God was present and that He um, was powerful, that He was tangible and able to move, um, that He wasn't far away. I would say my hunger for the Lord was really, really defined um, by 
my experience at Hebron and I've been so impacted by the beautiful people in this church and by by so many people's love um, for me and for my family and for my sisters um, over the years. And I'm very, very grateful. It will always be a place that I call home, always be a place that has um, launched me into my future. And so celebrating with you on this very beautiful day, um, sending lots and lots of love and just praying for a fresh season of outpouring and breakthrough. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. And I really believe in this season that He is um, changing our normals that he is lifting us out of places where we've been stuck or where we have had wrong um, habits and mindsets. And he's pulling us into a place where we know that we are um, children of God, that we are sons and daughters, that we are the beloved, that we can, can move in confidence because he lives inside of us. And I really believe that he's bringing us into that place of confidence in this next season. And a lot of us have come through tough seasons where we have had to fight for our confidence and our faith and our courage and um and i think it's been a refining time and i'm i'm really believing <laughs> just for that breakthrough for every one of us in this season i believe he's got upgrades for us that we haven't seen the best yet that there's still so much more of him to experience so much of his victory that we can still experience in our lives we mustn't get complacent we mustn't think that it's going to pass us by we must expect our father to lavish us with his love amen so father we just want to say thank you for this incredible celebration day Thank you for making it possible. Thank you for stirring our hearts for it. Thank you for helping us remember. And I think some stories are still going to be written that should be remembered and put up on the wall still for in, in the coming weeks. But um, I just, I speak a blessing over this church. I speak a blessing of everyone that's here, the team that's ministered to us, the visitors that are among us, the special guests. And especially, Lord, to you, we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness to us, your faithfulness, for stirring our hearts. Lord, we choose to say yes to your promises. Yes to what is being provoked in us to dream for, to believe for, to trust for, to walk into. Thank you for giving us glimpses of the future. And... Uh, we trust you for the faith and the conviction and the witness of your voice. Thank you for an explosion of gifting and ministry and love to serve the city and regions beyond as you direct, as you open doors. We say thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And while we're at it, Lord, I bless the food that we're about to receive and get ready for. We bless the hands that made it. We bless the tummies that will receive it and our joyful fellowship around the tables. Just bless this time of celebration. We say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, some quick instructions. So we have on the table, there are some, um, there's, a, there's a name list with table numbers. Next to it, so you can find your name and, and the table number next to it. Uh, Nicole's going to help us decorate the tables, but uh, and numbers will be put on the table so you know where your table number is. But basically, we're going to start from the front here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's how the tables are going to go. Um, basically, what I'm going to ask you to do is, is where you're sitting, just group the chairs into a circle of about 14 chairs. So... There should be three circles of 14 on, on that side, on this section, on this section, on this section. And uh, we're going to put a table in the middle of each circle. Does that make sense? So you can all help with that. Um, so holy chaos, here we go. 